know, this is WAPU. WAPU uh, came into being in 2009 in Japan as a way to help market WordPress to people in Japan. <clears throat> and uh, if you want to find out the history of WAPU and see all the different WAPUs, you can uh, go to wapu.us, one of the sponsors here. They've got all the info there. And uh, all the different WordCamps around the world have created, well, most of them have created their own version of WAPU with their own cultural flavor. So <clears throat> back in 2016, we got our own WAPU for Miami. And uh, Cafecito WAPU was de designed by Michelle Shoup. She, uh, she's the girl with the purple hair. You've seen her around. She's here, she's here, she's here at WordCamp. And all the WAPUs hold, some, hold something, so like a ball or something like that. So our WAPU holds a little shot of Cuban coffee. <clears throat> you can see, rather than just the dots, he's got like these crazy caffeinated eyes. He's shaking. And uh, where's the guayabera? <clears throat> so uh, in 2016, when WAPU, our WAPU was created, I thought, this is just amazing. This is the most awesome thing. <clears throat> and I decided, as one of the uh, organizers, I would create a Twitter account as a personality for WAPU, Cafecito WAPU. And uh, so I live tweeted WordCamp as Cafecito WAPU. And I thought, you know what? I'll take the opportunity to introduce people to stuff about Miami, Spanglish, all sorts of different things. And so he kind of got a personality. <clears throat> and then the next year, we... Uh, the next year, we decided to create this Slack bot. So he would just interact you know, with the personality in Slack. And <clears throat> WordCamp had started to adopt Slack as the main, method, main way of communication. So we thought, I mean, it may be a benefit because it could respond to some questions that people have, but just make it fun as well. So as far as the actual, how does a bot work, or how does this bot work, you've got Slack. And Slack is you know, an application that you create messages on. And when you create a, an app for Slack, you can send and receive messages back and forth between that app. So Wapu is the app. By the way, he's got like these uh, Spanglish kind of sayings here. It's a typical Cuban thing. It's like, it's not easy, man. You know, well, fácil. So <clears throat> that's the app in the middle. And it's a JavaScript node app running on a web server someplace. And you just tell Slack whenever you get a message, you know, based on certain parameters, you send it to the app. And the app does stuff with it and responds back. Well, this particular app <clears throat> that I wrote, one of the helpful things it does is allow people to search the schedule. So if you, if you, in Slack, if you say at WAPU find, just type you know, part of somebody's name or maybe JavaScript, and it'll find you a session or like a, a speaker you know, with that name. The way that he does that is that I, I, pull, uh, I pull the WordCamp schedule from our website, which is a WordPress site, using the WordPress JSON API. <clears throat> And then I save that, all the schedule information, in a MongoDB database, kind of as a local cache, or cache actually on another server. And then when he gets a request to like, do a search, he searches the, uh, the database. See, I'm already talking about an using anthropomorphic language for the bot. It's, it's, it's a JavaScript app. It's not a he, but you know, it makes it more fun to talk about it as he does this. You know. So that's basically, that's basically the app. <clears throat> so a couple of helpful links. <coughs> Pardon me, I'm getting over a cold. I mean, I'm over it, but just got a cough. Slack has an API, and you can find all about it here at api.slack.com. And you can create what's called a bot user. You can do other stuff like slash commands. I'm sure you've seen those in Slack, where you can just like do something like create a to-do item or something like that, like that, depending on the app. But you can also create a bot app, a bot user app, which basically integrates in as if it were another user. So it can 
create messages, respond to messages. So that's what this app does. And you can either mention at WAPU, or you can just say anything to somebody else on the channel, and all those messages get sent to the app. A useful service you might have with it is like maybe you want to do some kind of content filtering. Uh, I'm sure you all, if you've ever used Slack, you've, Slack, you're, you've seen the, <clears throat> like if you say, hey guys, the Slack bot by default will say, well, don't you mean to say, hey team, instead of hey guys, you know, like because you're, you know, you're using male language. Well, <clears throat> in San Francisco, that's the way things are done. Um, but in Miami, rightly or wrongly, when you say guys, girls say guys to each other too. Like the girls will say, hey guys, and there's four girls there, and let's go to the mall, or let's go write some code. And the girls say guys as well. So, you know, the bot in Slack is intercepting that message and putting up something else that you want to, to do. So that's the Slack API. <clears throat> now, this bot app that I wrote, a any bot app, is basically a web service that responds to HTTP requests. So with this particular one, it's Node.js, and I found a project on GitHub. It's called BotKit. There's a company named Howdy. Howdy.ai. I got all the links to, at this um, later on in the slides. And so this bot kit is set up as a framework to allow you to just put in the hooks to respond to you know, the different messages and also then uh, you know, receive and send back. So it handles all the plumbing. <clears throat> One of the difficult things about writing a bot app is determining the intent of somebody. If you've been watching on the channel, I'm sure you've seen some embarrassing responses that, uh, that WAPU does. Like for instance, I had it set up that if anybody says anything about registration, he replies with, you know, the registration desk, blah, 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 you know, bring your, and so later on this afternoon, people were saying, hey, we set up a lost and found at the registration desk. Um, somebody left their keys at the registration desk. And then the bot is replying, in order to register, go to the, you know, it's just kind of inappropriate. <clears throat> so that's one of the tricky things with writing a, a bot like this, like a chat bot, is that if you write it simply like I did, which was just to have like a dictionary of, of keywords, then you're gonna get into that kind of thing where sometimes it's not appropriate. So uh, to fix it, I just turned off the registration. <laughs> We're already past registration, so I just kind of turned off that listening. But <clears throat> last year, I used a service which is a natural language processing service, and this is where they're at, people are actually using what they call AI nowadays. It's, you know, machine learning or whatever. And so there's different services. There's Lewis.ai, which is built by Microsoft. There's Wit.ai, which is built by Facebook. And you can actually configure different phrases to determine what somebody is trying to, to get at. So um, I used that last year, and it worked pretty well, but then I started having to do exceptions so I ended up having to do my own little, you know, put in keyword searches and stuff like that anyway. So I just ditched the, the natural language processing this year. And what I did was in, in the JavaScript app, I just built like a bunch of keywords and then, you know, respond with this or respond with some kind of random GIF image or something. So, but that's one of the more difficult things about <clears throat> writing a bot, just uh, in case you ever decide to. So in order to get the WordCamp schedule data, like I said, I used the WordPress API, and <clears throat> this was really helpful because WordCamp Central, which is run by the WordCamp Foundation, provides all the hosting for the WordCamp websites. So they've been doing this for years. In the past, we'd have to get our own domain. It was, it was a mess. And so they provide all the hosting on WordPress.com for all the WordCamps around the world but it's locked down. I can't go in and edit functions.php. I can't put in a new page template. I can't touch any of that stuff. All I can do, when we do our website, everything's gotta be customized through CSS. It's a nightmare. But I've learned a lot about how into, you know. So basically, like if there's some stuff displayed about the schedule and the logic, in CSS I have to put in rules to say, okay, hide this, 
or add this content, that kind of thing, all through CSS rules. They have it locked down. But they did, thankfully, provide at least the basic uh, feed for the sessions from the schedule. So the app that I wrote pulls down that feed using the JSON API. I can't customize it by saying, you know, include this or transform this, like put, you know, look up this, uh, um, like if I get a category ID, you know, give me the, give me the actual name of the category. I have to get, <clears throat> kind of map that myself in the app. But at least I was able to get that. And it was, I think it's a good example of just how WordPress is becoming and has become, but even more just a content repository sometimes without really being a website. So this was a website that's out there, but my app is integrating through Slack and showing data that's managed on the WordPress website. If you caught the talk earlier by Rodrigo, Rodrigo from Brazil, he like did a demo with a uh, Raspberry Pi, you know, posting to a WordPress site. So it's kind of cool how, how um, WordPress is becoming like that. Also in the app, um, I used MongoDB, like I said, to <clears throat> kind of cache and format the data in a nicer format that I could easily search. And I came across this nifty little MongoDB library. First time I ever touched MongoDB in my life was with this project about, two, about a month ago. And I found this little library called Monk and it turns out it was developed by Automatic. So I used Monk as a kind of little library to, to run my Mongo queries and also save, save the data. So here's an example of like what WAPU, the, what the app does. Like for instance, <clears throat> I have some keywords that are just kind of Easter eggs. If you type, if you mention swag, you'll get like a random GIF that I made, you know, for, for swag. If you compliment WAPU or say something to him, you know, he'll respond with different, you know, try to come up with different kinds of Miami Caribbean or Cuban, uh, Haitian, Jamaican kind of sayings from Miami. Um, <clears throat> you can search like find Matt and that shows you like it shows you the, the different the two sessions where somebody named Matt is mentioned. Don't miss Matt Mullenweg later today. Um, I've got some Easter eggs where he just like comments on, you know, just says something like a deep thought, you know. Also mentioned coffee, he loves coffee, and uh, he'll serve up some coffee. Now here's interesting, we had the whole tragedy on Thursday, and all the stuff I had planned, I had to kind of modify because we had new information. So what I did was I went in and I put like a, in, a, in a few places, like if somebody asked about directions or so on, I, I modified it to put in like a little update about going to our website you know, with the latest news about the update. So th this is actually something useful that a bot, you know, could do. Like say you don't have a person who's manning your Slack channel or Facebook or even text messaging, whatever it is, you know, you can have a bot that can at least give people information or give a number to call or a website to go to. So all the source code for what I did is in this repository. Um, it, I didn't write a whole lot of code. All I really had to do was take that bot kit demo app or sort, you know, starter app, and I had to put in the definition for the, uh, <clears throat> the different controllers and also then my data for what I was going to use for what messages and so on. Um, I think that you could take this and go ahead, like if you wanted to do something with it, you know, you could, you could, you could try it out just to see what I did for another web, uh, WordCamp. Um, <clears throat> There's a lot of things in it that are special just for WordCamp Miami, but hopefully it could be a, uh, a starter. Here's some links to the resources and services I used. So Slack, BotKit, the WordPress REST API. This, uh, here's one interesting thing, and I've got one minute left, right? Yeah. I am a C-sharp .NET SQL Server developer. I'm 52 years old. I learned jo JavaScript and Node.js on the side. It wasn't part of my job. I'm not one of those young kids taking like a code camp thing and trying to get a, a Node job. But I've got experience and you gotta always keep learning. One of the hardest things about developing with JavaScript and Node is that barrier for how to 
get in, right? And manage all that command line crap that you got to do on the front end. Well, there's this service called Glitch, where you can put up a node app, and you just put in the packages that you want to use, and it installs them and deploys to a container, and you kind of just edit it right on the web. And I'm going to show it right here, and then I'm going to stop my talk because I'm out of time. But like, here is the actual app I've got. All my files, <clears throat> here's the code for some of those controllers. When I go in and edit, every, every, I don't even have to save. Every, every type I make, once, once it detects that it compiles, it deploys it to a container and the app is new and fresh out there. It's an awesome way to learn JavaScript. So glitch.com, that was another one of the resources I had. You can get the GitHub repository uh, link from there or on my website, papasoft.com. So I, think, I, don't have, I didn't have any time for questions, but if you want to hit me up afterwards, I'll be happy to answer some questions. Yeah, I think you will be on the happiness ride too after this. Beware.